Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information, as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. Today is April 6th. In 1896, the Olympic Games were reborn in Athens, Greece, 1,500 years after being banned by Roman Emperor Theodosius I. The first celebration of the modern Olympic Games took place in its ancient birthplace, Greece. The Games attracted athletes from 14 nations, with the largest delegations coming from Greece, Germany, France, and Great Britain. Due to its historical significance, the Greek hosts wanted to win the marathon above all else. Spirit and Luis set off from the city of Marathon and took the lead four kilometers from the finish line and to the joy of 100,000 spectators, won the race by more than seven minutes. Hungarian swimmer Alfred Hajos won the 100 meter and the 1200 meter events. For the longer race, the swimmers were transported by boat out to sea and left to swim the required distance back to shore. Hajos later confessed that his will to live completely overcame the desire to win. And American James Connolly won the triple jump to become the first Olympic champion in more than 1,500 years. He also finished second in the high jump and third in the long jump. In that first Olympic Games, there were 241 athletes competing in 43 different events. The opening of the Games was proclaimed by the head of the state of the host nation, an Olympic anthem composed by Spirit and Samaras who created the music, and Costas Palamas, the lyrics, was first played at the games of the first Olympiad in Athens. Thereafter, a variety of musical offerings provided the backgrounds to the opening ceremonies until 1960, when the Samaras, Samaras Palamas composition became the official Olympic anthem, and it was taken a decision by the International Olympic Committee in 1958. In 1909, explorers Robert E. Peary and Matthew A. Henson claimed to become the first men to reach the North Pole. American explorer Robert Peary accomplished a long elusive dream when he and assistant Matthew Henson and four Inuits reached what they determined to be the North Pole. Decades after Peary's death, however, navigational errors in his travel log surfaced, placing the expedition in all probability a few miles short of that goal. Peary, an U.S. naval civil engineer, made his first trip to the interior of Greenland in 1886. And then in 1891, Henson, a young African-American sailor, joined him on his second Arctic expedition. Their team made an extended dog sled journey to the northeast of Greenland and explored what became known as the Peary Land. In 1893, the explorers began working toward the North Pole, And in 1906, during their second attempt, they nearly reached latitude 88 degrees north, only 150 miles from their objective. In 1908, the pair traveled to Ellesmere Island by ship and in 1909 raced across hundreds of miles of ice to reach what they calculated as latitude 90 degrees north on April 6th of 1909. Although their achievement was widely acclaimed, Dr. Frederick A. Cook challenged the distinction of being the first to reach the North Pole. A former associate of Peary, Cook claimed he had already reached the pole by dog sled the previous year. A major controversy followed, and in 1911, U.S. Congress formally recognized Peary's claim. In recent years, further studies of the conflicting claims suggest that neither expedition reached the exact North Pole, but that Peary and Henson came far closer, falling perhaps 30 miles short. On May 3, 1952, U.S. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph O. Fletcher of Oklahoma stepped out of a plane and walked on to the precise location of the North Pole. In 1917, following the sinking of the American liner Housatonic by German U-boat and four more other U.S. merchant ships, President Wilson appeared before Congress and called for a declaration of war against Germany, and on this day, the United States formally declared war on Germany. Wheat and thin strips of wood, did these benign supplies really play a role in getting America into World War I? In fact, logistics played a key part in bringing our nation into this conflict, in particular, America's policy of, despite official neutrality, providing supplies to Britain via merchant ships. At the turn of the 20th century, most Americans had grown weary of nearly a century of war. 
In the latter half of the 19th century alone, Americans fought and died in the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, and the Mexican War, not to mention the Indian Wars. In fact, Woodrow Wilson ran for re-election with the slogan, He Kept Us Out of War. But soon after war broke out in 1914, America began to supply food, materials, and even munitions to Britain and other German enemies, such as Italy. Germany, itself under pressure from British sea blockade, began using its Unterseeboot, better known as U-boats or submarines, to sink these merchant ships in 1915. The Germans believed that American merchant ships, by delivering supplies, were contributing in a real way to the success of their enemy, Great Britain. Cruiser law of the era dictated that unarmed vessels first be boarded, inspected for contraband, and if contraband was found, be afforded enough time for crew and passengers to escape via lifeboats. The first such attack in January of 1915 was the ship William P. Fry, which was carrying wheat to Britain. Germany sank several more U.S. merchant ships that year. However, because of the comparatively genteel rules of engagement, most of these early sinkings brought about no casualties. But by early 1917, Germany was on the verge of losing the war, and so it declared on January 31st that its submarines had the right to sink any ship in the war zone encircling the United Kingdom without warning. Between this announcement and the U.S. declaration of war on April 6th, Germany sank 10 U.S. merchant ships. The Housatonic first ship sunk after the announcement of unrestricted submarine warfare was carrying wheat to the British government. The second ship, the Lehman M. Law, was sunk for carrying what Germany considered lumber, and actually thin strips of wood used to build lemon crates. As to the views of the American public, these ongoing attacks with their civilian deaths combined with the rape of Belgium, Germany's offer in the Zimmerman telegram to return to Mexico and large a recently acquired swath of the United States in prospect of a war to end all wars turned the nation from isolationism to nationalism. And so America declared war April 6, 1917 with the first U.S. troops arriving in June. For those American doughboys, it might have all begun with food and lumber. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I thank you for listening and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you to the following websites for their information regarding today's topics. ThePeopleHistory.com Olympic Games Athens 1896 from Olympics.com Logistics and American Entry into the Great War at www.dla.mil and Peary's Expedition Reaches the North Pole from History.com. The music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on Incompetech.com. If you enjoyed this information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing, as this will keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.